IISD Reporting Services is here in Cancun, Mexico, reporting on selected site events, convening in parallel with the 46th Global Environment Facility Council meeting and the 5th Jeff Assembly. On Tuesday, May 26, a side event on protected areas and biodiversity conservation in the 21st century showcased two studies by the Scientific and Technical Advisory Panel to the Jeff providing analysis of existing efforts to help better inform future initiatives. Sandra Diaz, a staff member, prefaced panel presentations by drawing attention to the threat of losing the biodiversity battle by outlining three facts. First, uh, protected areas, uh, although they are essential, are simply not enough. Something has to be done about biodiversity in the 88 remaining land area which is occupied by uh, production landscapes. Andrew Pullen, one of the main authors of the staff report on human well-being, shared the importance of a systematic review in order to avoid the pitfalls of research being susceptible to biases. The most striking findings of the systematic review that we conducted was that when we looked at the qualitative evidence of impacts, and um, we did this by asking people what the impacts were on their lives of the establishment of a protected area. They reported a really rich uh, range of impacts that uh, they felt they had experienced. But when you actually try and find studies that have measured those impacts in some sort of objective and quantitative way, then they're virtually non-existent. Brian Huntley referenced the Convention on Biological Diversity and the Aichi targets and identified a pathway to integrate mainstreaming biodiversity. This uh, trade-off between uh, engaging with and developing strong mainstreaming projects in the absence of strong capacity, strong governance, strong institutions, and strong champions is, is, is a real challenge that needs to be addressed. The chair for the World Commission on Protected Areas for IUCN stressed the value of indigenous peoples in protected areas. For a long time, until maybe 10 or 15 years ago, many indigenous communities were perceived as being, in some cases, even the culprits of uh, degradation, when in reality uh, they are the, the wardens or the, the custodians of, of nature. If we add the indigenous uh, and community conserved areas and territories with the established protected areas by governments, it's almost one-fourth of all the terrestrial ecosystems of the planet, which means that it's the most important land use of the planet. Mark Zimsky from the Jeff presented the Jeff Six strategy for biodiversity, reporting that over the last 10 years, the Jeff has invested in 327 biodiversity mainstreaming initiatives. You have to start looking beyond just the biodiversity pillar of the program and looking at those elements of our work in sustainable land management through the land degradation focal area, international waters, the sustainable forest management program, and some of the integrated approaches, taking deforestation out of the commodity supply chain and the work in sub-Saharan Africa on resilience and food security, all making various contributions to the achievement of that plan. Jose Carlos Fernandez commented on presentations. Uh, the Jeff needs to uh, precisely fill that gap that was highlighted in some of the, in some of the presentations to empower not, uh, countries, not just with actions, funding for actions, but also funding to generate knowledge that enables further, further action. Pullen summarized with a way forward through incorporating an interdisciplinary lens for future studies. We need fewer, bigger studies, and those studies need to um, be interdisciplinary in the sense that they have a, a social sciences aspect, maybe political sciences, economics, as well as natural sciences involved to properly measure all of these different indicators of human well-being. Mm -hmm.